Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial. Um, this is about adding some fake snow to an image. This particular image I've got from pixabay.com and I will add a link to this in the description for the video. As you see, that's a very snowy scene but there is no sort of actual snow falling down at the time. So we could add some fake snow a bit like that just to sort of give it a much more wintry feeling. So this is what we're going to do. Let me just delete that off. Don't need that anymore. So we're back to our basic image. Now this is a conversion of a Photoshop tutorial that was sent. To, the link was sent to me by Murray White, um, but the actual tutorial is done by Michelle Greenia. I'm very sorry to her if I've mispronounced it. It's only just gone up, but you can see it went up 12-31-2018. So it's a written tutorial, so you can read this yourself and follow it yourself. If you must prefer the written uh, tutorial. Because basically everything you can do here you, in this Photoshop tutorial, you can do in Affinity Photo. So basically we start off by making a new blank layer so you just click on this icon down here which is add pixel layer and so now we need some snow brushes now there are various ones around and there are links in this written tutorial to two sets of snow brushes from brush easy so if you click on the first link you, get, you can get the first set of 15 snow brushes. I'll come back to the second one and then you've got snow two. And there's another 15 different snow brushes. These brushes, you can download these, um, unzip them and install them into Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer. They both work in both um, programs. So you don't have to use these but these are the ones that are used in this tutorial and the ones I'm going to use in this video tutor tutorial. So once you've downloaded these brushes you can install them by coming to the brush tab click on this little menu up here and then come down to import brushes and then you just have to navigate to where you've installed those brushes and you will install them into Affinity Photo or Designer. And once they're installed, you get this drop down menu, and there will be the last brush that you've entered. So, so I'm going to go for the Snow Brush 2 collection. So we have these brushes here. So let's go with this first one. Now, as you can see, this is going to be doing the um, dots and whatever in black, so I need to change the color from black to white. And you can increase the size. And it's just a case of moving them around and putting it where you think looks best. So I'll just click the once there. So we have the first layer, but let me come off this tool so I can get rid of all that snow imagery. Snow is, as it says in the written tutorial, snow, you know, it's not, it's not still, it's always moving, it's floating around, so we need to add a bit of motion blur to this. So we come up to filter, blur, motion blur. Now you can change the direction of this to whatever suits your image and whatever you're trying to do and you can also change how much blur there is going to be on the snowdrops so it's a I can't give you precise numbers for what you're tr trying to do what works with your image is how much radius and how much angle that you want 
So for this particular layer, I'm going to go with an angle of 315 and the radius of just over 26. They can also muck around with the opacity. So they can be a bit brighter, a bit lighter, whatever suits your particular image. So once you're happy with that, you can you don't have to stick with just one lot of snow because again as it says in the written tutorial snow comes in all different sizes so I'm going to add another layer come back to brushes and I'm going to pick a different one which hopefully has maybe some smaller dots so we'll try that one let's come onto the brush tool as you can see there's are much smaller dots in this particular one just raise the size of this so I'm going to put that about there again come off that tool and add the blur to this so it's motion blur I'm going to keep the angle the same so it looks like the wind direction whatever you is blowing the snow in the same direction and just lower the radius of that so they're a bit more visible yes I'm happy with that so I'll click apply on there so you can add a few more layers or not it's up to you and your particular image that you're and the result you want to get now also with an image like this I mean you may not want to cover up the face or the body of the person as much as it is so we just need to remove some of this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click on that bottom pixel layer uh, snow layer and then I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to group them together and then I'm going to add a layer mask to the group and to do that it's just this icon here just click on that that's it and it will add a white layer mask to the group now because it's a white layer mask it will allow everything to be seen so what we just need to do is paint a bit of black onto the mask over the areas that we want to make more visible so again I've got to come back to the brush tool and this time we'll go back to a more normal brush so let me go back to the basic brushes and we'll go with Try that one for now. Just increase the size a little bit. Now the hardness, I'm going to reduce this down even further. And the opacity, I'll just reduce that down to about 50%. And then it's just a case of double checking that I've actually got the mask highlighted and that's what I'm painting on. And then I'm just going to paint Oh, make sure I'm in black. No, I'm not. Paint, make sure I see it in black. And then just paint over, say, like the eyes and the lips, just to remove some of that snow so the face isn't being so. I'm not gonna, I don't want to take all of it away. Let me just, let me just harden this down a bit more. So there is still some snow on the face but it's not totally obscure in the face that bit on the nose looks a bit horrible so we'll take that away yeah so that to my mind is looking better so it now looks more like more realistic snow but we've also removed some of it from the face so it doesn't hide the image that we are after and that is basically it that is the end of the tutorial like i said if i would have a look at this link here and look at her instructions she probably describes it much better than i can and and like there's some a bit down here about basic rules about the different size of the snowflakes and the opacity and the blurriness so i would advise you read that because it's a good article and thank you, Murray, for sending me the link. 
and hopefully I have done this lady justice in my tutorial. Thank you for watching and goodbye.